Hello everybody, welcome to Slay the Spire, playing as the Watcher on Ascension 1. This is Act 2. We had a phenomenal Act 1, got a Floor 2 lesson learned, uh, had multiple opportunities to pull out defends. This was a transform of a defend. So we have a very thin deck, um, two ways of entering Wrath, two ways of entering Calm, a way to drop stance, weak, vulnerable. Deck has it all. And then of course we have this as a finisher, which upgrades our deck. And that's why we only have two cards that are not plus yet. So great first start, which led to me choosing Fusion Hammer, because we don't need to smith if we smith within our deck. And we got some decent uh, survivability relics. Anyways, looking at the map, um, we do have this early shop here, which we do have a lot of money, so I'm pleased with that. And if we come up through this route, we can heal here after this elite, if need be. And then we have Elites 2 and 3 with the ability to heal before the boss. So that's the path that I like there. Uh, if this turns out to be a crap store, we can um, come this way if we want to. Still get two Elites instead of three. We'll see how it goes. Alright, Shelled Parasite. You know, for the longest time I didn't realize that this guy heals on the damage he does. There's nothing here that, that tells you that he would. Anyways. <clears throat> we can... Crushed Joints. Well, I'll tell, well, no, okay. I was going to defend to trigger the Crushed Joints, but that would be a waste of our energy or Talcum's going to kick in for six. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the Vulnerable on and we have the strike pluses and stuff. Oh, and look at that. We're going to defend anyways. Sure, why not? It's it's two more defend. We have the energy. Thanks to using the uh, <coughs> miracle up front. If I ever call it the coin, you'll have to forgive me. I used to play Hearthstone. So, here we can end in vigilance, although we don't need to. Um, I think I probably should anyways, just because otherwise we're left with one energy we can't play. Oh, wait, yeah, plus we don't want to kill him. <laughs> I almost killed him. I wasn't paying attention. Okay. Wouldn't have been the end of the world because we only have two cards we need to upgrade, but we can play better than that. So this is 15, no vulnerable, so this would not be lethal. I go ahead and it doesn't matter which one we do. This is the weakest. Only peels back the armor. And there we go. Alright, Crescendo is now free. That was a little bit better. Meditate. Oh, that is such a good card. And with our lesson learned, that means if we have it in the discard pile, we can get it back. We won't be able to play it the same turn, but sometimes that might be okay. This might be our last energy. We spent the turn in Wrath, so now we can enter Calm. This actually makes the pickup of Crescendo that one time that much better, because we had the choice of a Tranquility. So now we're actually leading in Calm Entry, which is fine, because that could lead to energy. We do have the Empty Fist. What do we have here? Cut Through Fate. Scry and draw. That would help us find either um, the lesson learned or a way to enter wrath or one of our precious few block cards if that's what is dictated. Uh, scry. We get to add scry to our deck, I suppose. Cut through fate. Strike, which would leave us with two unupgraded attacks. So we could even do this. That might be a little ridiculous, huh? Might be better to just remove. Nunchucks are okay. I don't know if it's worth the money. Uh, we're doing fine with energy, especially in this class where we can use Calm for energy generation. So I think I definitely want to get all the Scry stuff. Let's do that. Uh, let's see. This is not every turn, so maybe like so. Bowling ball. Or bowling bash, excuse me. It was covered up, so I just said bowling ball because of the picture. 
Uh, against the Collector, Bowling Bash would be very strong. He's got his summons out. We can pretty much ignore them. And then Bowling Bash upgraded his 10 per, so that's 30, and Wrath 60 with Vulnerable 90 for one energy. Um, and that wouldn't be the only fight it would be advantageous in, right? We're in Act 2, so as far as Elites go, we're afraid of Slavers. Slavers would give us uh, the same values, so even just Wrath would be lethal on the first. Wrath plus Vulnerable would be lethal on the second. Um, so, Bowling Bash is worth considering. Um, the only reason it's not a snap pickup for me is how tight the deck is. Adding Scry kind of helps to cut through that a little bit, to some extent. And, quite frankly, we don't want to be that we're making bad plays just to support the lesson learned. Um, early Act 1, we took 11 just so we could pass the turn and get lesson learned. And early Act 1, I think that's fine. Um, here things can get, like the three slavers, that can get real dangerous real fast. Uh, with the horn cleat, I'm not as worried, but we still be vulnerable on turn one. Um, that said, that vulnerability would be offset by a good bowling bash. So maybe we bowling bash and remove the unupgraded strike? to help justify. It's on sale. Gotta do it if it's on sale, right? That whetstone is so tempting, but we're not really in a eager to add cards to the deck, so I'm confident that the lesson learned can catch up, especially if we upgrade or er, remove the unupgraded strike. I don't remove the un up the upgraded defend because I think we're at a point where having the, a few block cards is probably going to be advantageous. Uh, maybe not the evaluate in the shop. Okay, so if we had taken judgment, we could just kill this guy in one energy. We might be able to do it here, actually. We do have this, and I don't like sitting on three. So let me cut through fate. Or maybe we do this first to help make it reachable. Well, let me th let me just take a look at... Th oh, crap. Artifact. That was foolish. Okay, I was looking at how, how would we be able to actually... So this first, to draw a Wrath card, would have been better. Um... It's probably too late for that. Let me count this out. Uh, we have three energy remaining. If we got... Let me look at this real quick. Make sure everything's resolved. Alright, so if we discarded both of these and we got Erupt, we'd be able to hit for nine. Then this would be 20, so that's 29, and this would be 26, so it would be lethal. Alright. Yeah, because my initial line of thought was cut through fate to find a Wrath Enabler. Now, if we find Crescendo, that's probably still good, right? Because Strike Plus is the... Yeah, okay. So we have a 1 in 5 chance of just being able to have Lethal here. Didn't get it. Which really, really, really sucks, because now he's going to put on more armor, and we're going to come have to come back around through the deck. But we can at least start peeling back the artifact in case that ends up being a factor. So, made a mistake, but in the end it turned out to not be a non-punish. <laughs> and now that he's got 25, we can actually bat him around a bit here. Okay, so here, this is the perfect, this is exactly why we got the Meditate. So we can erupt first. Bowling Bash does 14. This does 18, which is too much. So let's go ahead and pop out. Put the lesson learned back in our hand, and there we go. We're all set. Well, actually, that's not true. We have to do one more thing. Um, it doesn't matter. We have lethal. So we'll do this, and then this. There we go. Okay, Bowling Bash gets upgraded. Good, because it's, it's a multi-strike card. Um, do we have enough stance 
to do empty fist number two. Maybe? I don't think the few points it does over some of our other strikes makes risking dropping wrath when we don't want to. So I'll skip here. Yeah, I'll skip here. We have, we have to have some sort of, like, trying to maintain a thin deck. That is not the way... We only have three strikes, so this would actually bloat our deck. Make our hits... What does an upgraded look like? It's I think it's 9 and 3. That's interesting, but at the loss of that much max HP, I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, we're a bit of a glass cannon class, especially with all the defense we pulled out. I don't think lowering our max HP is the way to go. Ooh, this is a difficult decision. 20 cards to choose from is a pretty good chance we find something we like. The problem is that I don't think you can skip. So what would we be looking for? Primarily card draw, right? We have three Calm Enablers, so um, Inner Peace would be great. Deceive Reality is a perfectly good. Shimmering Fury is card draw, as well as another Wrath. Cut Through Fate number two. Um, Wallop's a little awkward. I used to dismiss this card. I'm like, oh, that's a weaker version of Dash, which is already kind of weak. But no, with Wrath, it can get better. Obviously, it's unblocked damage, so um, you might miss out on the block component. But great survivability card. Mental Fortress... would be great later on. Okay, so I'm glad I chose this. We have some good choices here. I'm looking at Shimmering Fury, Mental Fortress, Cut Through Fate. My biggest concern with Wallop is the two... We have a lot of cards where we're spending an energy not so much for the damage, but the entering of Wrath to apply the weak. And sometimes we want to get back out of stance, so even with four energy, I think two is a bit of a tough sell. So I'm looking at Shimmering Fury, Mental Fortress, and Cut Through Fate. Um, we do have three ways of entering Calm, two ways of entering Wrath, and one way of dropping. And, of course, one of the ways to enter Wrath exhausts, so that could be a problem. There's no tantrum here, for example. Uh, there is a Simmering Fury, and that is the card draw we're looking for, but so is Cut Through Fate, sort of. I think because we have a Meditate, this card is that much better because we have a greater chance of guaranteeing that it's not just enter Wrath and draw two cards, but also gain two energy. So I think I might take this over a cut through fate. I just got done watching a tier list video where the guy was going off about how any class could benefit from having three or four of these in the deck. It's the best card in the game, etc. And I could certainly see where he's coming from. The scry before you draw... <clears throat> Maybe I should go into that for the people who are like me and kind of new to Scry. Um, if, say, we absolutely wanted to find our lesson learned, uh, this gives us upgraded, it says three. This gives us a way to basically reach four cards into our deck. We look at the top three. If none of them are there, we discard them all, and now we get to pick the fourth card. Um, it's a way, like, uh, times where you have unique cards. Like, we only have one Bowling Bash and only one card that does what Bowling Bash does. And maybe we really need to find it. This is a great way to do that. So, and then this, of course, has the payoff of putting us in Wrath and maybe giving us two energy and drawing two cards instead of the one. What was the upgrade on this, anyways? We, it won't let us look. That's, that's, I don't like that. I think it's Wrath and three cards, whereas this is Scry three and draw one. But it's nine damage, so... Uh, you don't draw more, but you do scry more and do more damage. 
So I definitely think Mental Fortress would be the third pick. These two, um, Simmering Fury and Cut Through Fate. I think I'll go with Simmering Fury just because it is uncommon. There's a perfectly good chance that we'll um, find more opportunities for this. And the fact that this helps find this and this helps find this. I think if we were going to pass on a cut through fate, this is a fine card to do it with. I would have rather had an inner piece, but this is this works too, I think. That was a tough decision. All right, let's see if it paid off. These slavers. Bowling bash. Bowling bash. All right, so we do not have access to wrath which means this is 30 damage, this becomes 43, this is 30, 39, 58, uh, 52. So we could kill this guy first. Normally you want to kill this guy first, but as you can see his debuff, in fact, I think I can bring it up here in um, Bestiary. Yeah, he does the untangle, that's the main reason we want to uh, what's the vulnerability? Scrape, scrape, stab, okay. Um, if entangles, not, okay. So I know that the, I don't know what the vulnerable one. Oh, vulnerable, where we take more damage, okay. I'm looking more at what this guy does, which is weak. He's doing that right now. So if we have lethal on this one or this one, even though we normally want to kill this one first, I think since we can take them both out before entangle, because we're the watcher, I think that's the play. So... Assuming I counted this out correctly, let me double check. Uh, 30, 39, 40, 52, that is lethal there. And leaves us enough energy to meditate. Which puts us in calm. There we go. Sweet. Now again, that's not going to be upgraded. Oh, we don't have extra energy. Um, I kind of wanted to meditate for the bowling bash because it's still good. Especially if we draw into a wrath opener. Which we do have two that trigger the same turn or Chalkum's going to block 6 so there's no point in Miracle for Defend but I will Miracle for Meditate for the Bowling Bash it's still worth 20 for 1 and Wrath is 40 for 1 so if we have a Wrath Enabler Bowling Bash this guy any other attack and he's just done <coughs> there it is So because we are in Calm, I think we can afford the energy to do this first. Let me do the math here. Um, if we're in Wrath, this is worth 40 to 1 there. Cut through Fate is easy, lethal. And that's three or 2 energy, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we're going to have 6. So that's great. I, the reason I was checking is because I wanted to be able to crush joints this guy. That'll make finishing him off next turn. We're not afraid of him, even in Wrath. So I guess we don't have to Vigilance. But now we can do this. That's 40. This is lethal. Um, we draw whatever we choose. Or if we choose nothing, we'll draw the strike and then discard it if that's what we feel like. We don't need to pop into Calm and then... And we don't need the card draw either. Although if we empty Fist now... Uh, that's fine. He's invulnerable. We don't need the Wrath. This is fine. Oh, it's just lethal. <laughs> okay. Yeah, empty Fist by itself hits hard. So that was great. All right, so we have even we have some survivability now. A little bit of a uh, regen there. That's great. Um, this isn't a very exploitable effect. However, we don't have anything to exploit it with, and I do like both of these. This can help us like find better cards on difficult turns. What would we use duplication portion for? Bowling bash. Yeah. Yep. Bowling bash on the boss seems like a good. Good pick. 
Do we need AOE? <clears throat> what is our card draw like? Not good enough. We do have the Simmering Fury, but I would say on average not good enough. Not good enough to take the Consecrate. Yeah, our card draw is kind of bad. We don't have a, uh, I forget the name of the power, ramping up or something like that now. Um, <clears throat> conclude is a good card. The end your turn can be awkward because you can't use Wrath with it, or if you do, you're stuck in Wrath, which might be a downer. Um, I think basically we're set up to more or less just focus fire down. Like, even against the Collector. Yeah, the Collector. Um, we we'll probably just focus on the Big Bad and ignore the summons. Face tank what we need to. Um, that said, it is 12 damage, so for one, which is a fair exchange rate. I think because of the setup we have and our commitment to a thin deck, I'm going to pass... But I do think Conclude would be an okay pickup just to give us some AoE. That's the kind of fork in the road you want to... Oh, free upgrade. Uh, I was just looking at what cards need to be upgraded yet. Um, Meditate is awesome when it's upgraded. I mean, we've already seen how these two cards combo together, so to be able to like pull them both back, great. Some situations we might need Bowling Bash and Lesson Learn. I think this is the more immediate upgrade, and then, of course, Lesson Learn just snags that next fight. So I think I want to do Cut Through Fate here. But it is nice that we're down to just one unupgraded card. All right, some healing. Uh, we're healed to full, even though we have the Blood Vial. That's insane. Meat on the bone. <laughs> All right. So we have too much sustain at this point, which is fine. We're uh, rolling with only two cards that say block. This would have been a good fight for Ragnarok. Yeah. Still, Bowling Bash is still better than a strike. That's good. Do we drop our stance at the end? Well, um, we have a 50% chance-ish, less than 50%, not by much, 44% uh, chance of getting lesson learned in our next hand. If we don't, we have three ways of getting into Calm, so I'm not afraid to leave ourselves. Unfortunately, that means we either have to play Empty Fist first or bench it. Um, because we have the Miracle, we could just play it first and then bench it. Um... I think the reason why I'm going to skip doing that is because this guy has Malleable. So we'll get more return on fewer cards. So let's just do the four this turn. Although if we had done this as well. Um, yeah. It would have been within a range. So maybe it would have been better to do the Empty Fist first. Obviously now it would be lethal, so we don't want to do it. Hello, Horncleat. There it is. Found it. Alright, so he's going to gain some... Oh, you know what? No. Okay. Forgot we were in Wrath. Alright, so there we go. We have a fully upgraded deck now. Tranquility Plus. If we did that, we would have... If we did that, I do think then we would have reason for Empty Fist. My problem, again, is that we don't have enough card draw to be supporting extra cards right now. I don't think. Wouldn't want a second Sash Whip. Um... I think if we did have the Tranquility, a second Empty Fist would be fine. But right now, we don't have the card draw. We do have the Spice Melange. We do have Cut Through Fate. And in some cases, we're going to have the Simmering Fury. So we're doing okay. Um, on the other hand, because our deck is fully upgraded, the need to finish with Lesson Learned 
is diminished. Like, obviously, if we add a card, that changes, but the lack of card draw is not going to be... It's going to come down to the consistency of the deck, and right now, the number of stance control cards we have for the size of the deck is actually, I would say, full up. I think we're good where we're at, so I don't think I would take this. I think, if anything, I would take this, but I don't think I want to take that right now. It doesn't feel right. All right. Next elite, Book of Stabbing. So here our lack of black might punish us. Fear no evil puts us into calm. Okay. Okay, so we have full black with the vigilance. Uh, in fact, we'll have more than full black because of a week, which will extend in the next turn. Or Chalkum gives us six, so we could just strike to do the damage. But the fact that he lands any hit on us puts a wound in our deck. Um, since we don't need... If we needed to end with Lesson Learned, I would probably do the strike and just accept the wound. But there's no need to play this any differently than we otherwise would. In fact, we can just Lesson Learned. Um, let's see here. Let us crescendo. It's one of those weird things where I kind of want to cut through fate to see what we're going to draw. But then, if we crescendo first, the cut through fate hits for harder. Well, let's take a look at what we're looking at. We might just get it with eruption. I like the crushed joints. So that's what we're looking for, right? We're looking for crush joints. Um, and then we wouldn't have any way to drop for them. So I will cut through fate first. Or do we choose meditate to be able to crescendo this turn? That seems fine. Ending on Calm. That's kind of what we're going to play here. Bounce in and out of stance. So we actually, two, three, four, five, we actually can do all of these. So this is not a waste. In fact, it's good because now it thins out our deck. It is the weakest energy or damage per energy. Okay, so we would want Eruption and Cut Through Fate, I think. Yep. Good deal. You can't touch us. All right, now we should just be able to win, right? Uh, this is the Spice Melange, but I think we have Lethal. Let me take a peek here. Uh, this does 9. Well, no, hang on. This does 10. Now he's under Vulnerable. This does uh, 13, I want to say. So that's 10, 13, 23. And now everything does triple damage. So we can do the Cut Through Fate which is 27, so now that's 50, and then Empty Fist I think is lethal. If not, we can draw something in the interim. So I don't think this decision matters, but knowing that we're going to draw into a strike is fine. Uh, so we have to actually confirm that's what it is. Okay. Crush Joints, Eruption, Cut Through Fate. Uh, we'll discard everything but one. And then Empty Fist is just lethal. We don't even have to do an interim. Okay, that works. Damaru. I'm usually pleased to see this. Um, my outlook is that if you can get two mantra sources, then it's worth having. And the problem with that is that how do you justify taking your first one? If you can get a prostrate like in the early game, then it would. That's probably the easiest entrance into mantra and such. Whereas here, I think um, trying to build into Divine Stance is probably not great. Just because we have an, a pretty high number of Stance cards per capita. Mental Fortress or Second Chance at Judgment? Well, we do have three... 
Calm, three Wrath, and one Drop. So I think Mental Fortress is acceptable here. It's, it's a way to get a little defense. Now we have a card we want to upgrade, so we got to keep that in mind. Okay, tough crowd. There is no way that we lesson learn lethal this turn. Uh, we don't have to rush it, right? We have two targets here. So I will go ahead and set up the crush joints and then sash whip for survivability. I could have gone through for the cut through fate first. Um, let's just draw the mental fortress, put it into play. We have no block this turn. So, or, or Chalkum's just going to have to do whatever we can. And then we'll just go ahead and do what we can there. Okay, so we take a little bit of damage here. But we have plenty of ways of healing. And we can only use rest sites for healing. So I'm not worried about it. Meditate will pull the... Uh, lesson learned back into our hand set up for killing her next turn we also have crushed joints so this is a very good combo right especially if we oh, we can't we have crescendo though so yep that's the play right option with okay with the vulnerability this is lethal and then we can just play this pull Crush Joints and Lesson Learned back. Uh, Crushing Joints is activated by Meditate. That's yet another reason why I like the card. And obviously here we could just use Crescendo to set it up so that we're doing max damage. I'm just going to ignore this because I don't think we need it. I see enough damage cards that don't cancel our stance. So now it's just making sure that I do the math without killing her before her time. And with vulnerability, this is just lethal anyways. So there we go. Upgraded Mental Fortress. Piece of cake. We do not have enough block cards to value this over any of these. So I'm just going to skip that potion. Flurry of Blows. Wheel Kick. <sighs> Wheel Kick doesn't really give us the card draw that we want. Paying two energy... We have a good amount of stance control. That kind of puts this up there. In fact, having bad card draw makes this a little more valuable. Because it can compete. I don't know if that's true. It could make it more, could make it less. I was thinking in terms of whenever you have a trigger draw effect, it tr uh, Resolves first, so sometimes it just isn't in your discard pile anymore. We are often enough ending our turn with cards in hand. Flurry of Blows would help remedy that at the expense of adding one to the cards in our deck. So... This could conceivably be like 12 damage per turn, but sometimes it's not going to be in our discard. We do have Scry, so that's a way of getting it into our discard pile. There's that. But it's not going to be a steady 12 damage per turn because we're not always changing our stances. Sometimes we're changing our stances in ways that we're not controlling, like here and here to some extent. So no, I don't think Flurry of Blows fits. I think we'd get some use out of it, but I think it would be just awkward enough that we wouldn't be able to get as much use out of it as we want. So really, Wheel Kick's the only one to consider here. It is card draw, but it's clunky card draw because it costs two. And since a lot of our time, we're spending time like trying to control our stance. I don't know if that's the play. I th ideally, I would want an inner piece. At this point, I'd even accept an empty mind. And it also comes down to just the very small deck. If, it, if we weren't trying desperately to maintain it a very small deck, I would take this. 
just because it is some card draw. But right now, I think its clunkiness competes with our goal of keeping a streamlined deck. And I hope you guys agree, and then I'm not just overcompensating for understanding that that is a weakness of mine, that I tend to take too many cards over the course of a run. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. Fear no evil him just to enter calm doesn't gain us anything. Let me start by cut through fate this guy. Um, we don't need to end on lesson learned, so we'll just go ahead and discard that. Drawing it means we could play it, and we could... Uh, let me double check that. Okay, yeah. Um, we could draw and play it to thin out our deck. Uh, bowling bash is the call here, right? That's just good. That's lethal here in one energy, which is good. Because I did kind of want a Simmering Fury and Meditate. Meditate would give us Crushed Joints and Cut Through Fate, which is fantastic. We have no block here, so Or Chalkum's just going to have to do what it does. So there's some card draw, and these are just good cards to have. And then, of course, we're entering Wrath from Calm. So yeah, we got some synergies going here, finally. Coming into Wrath. My hand is full. Wow. Wow, what happened? Oh, because we had these. And then we drew five and we're supposed to draw three. Okay, that would be it. That's a first world problem, if ever. So we do this first. We do this second. Um, we have 14. He's going to do 20. So we could exit. We could end the turn here. Uh, but we probably have lethal, I'm guessing. Yeah, we just have lethal. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what we do here. Alright, so there we go. Just lethal. Alright, that's fine. Do we value the bottled miracle over the duplication or the gamblers? Gamblers, I'm thinking yes. Duplication on mental... F oh, wait, we already said duplication, bowling bash, boss. Yep, yep. Okay, I think I would value more energy on tap than Gambler's Brew. If only because I like Gambler's Brew, but it's not always clear when the situation's calling for it. Gladly take another cut through fate, so now we have a reason to end the fight with lesson learned, if at all possible. Not very afraid that it's the slavers, because if we go beyond this threshold, we just get extra healing. And then we have a campsite we can only use for healing anyways. <clears throat> so this is just an awkward turn, though, unfortunately. We can go ahead and do this and this. And then vigilance, I guess. Uh, there's no point in meditating here. Uh, it's just a question of whether to miracle to defend, but that would be excessive. I'm okay with taking 11. We almost certainly finish him off next turn. Oh, yeah, this guy. He's annoying. Whatever. Okay. I suppose because we have two bottled blessings that I'm okay with doing that. As a rule, I try not to have all my potions filled because then it's just... We've already had to pass on a couple, or discard, pass or discard a couple. And I don't like doing that. <clears throat> okay, eruption. Unfortunately, we are weakened, and this makes the math all wonky. Um, to be clear, though, my understanding is that multipliers like Wrath and Vulnerable happen first, and then the total that you would otherwise do is multiplied by 75 percent so it's not like we can look at this card and say oh or this card and say oh if we're in wrath it's going to do 10 
No, that's not true. It would do um, 14 minus 25%, which is, what, 4? So it would be doing 10. Yeah, okay, in that case it would do 10. I point this out because this is the one that we want to do the math for, right? We have the empty fist, so like these four cards are great. Um, actually, that's not true because we only have four energy. This might be a bottle turn. This might be a bottle turn. I, I'm thinking it would be nice to bowling ball like somebody other than him because I think bowling ball would be overkill on him. Bowling bash, excuse me. So if we were in wrath first, this would normally be 60 to 1. 25% of that is 15 minus that, so 45. Um, and that's fine. Because uh, under eruption. So let's eruption here. Now bowling bash here. Cut through fate here, looking for another card to do damage. Because this will currently do 21 to him. That's not enough. Uh, we do want to end the fight with Lesson Learned. And we do have the bottle. Let's go ahead and draw the Lesson Learned. Oh. I don't know that I was expecting him to be dead. But that's fine. So we can just drop form here. We know that Lesson Learned is lethal. And there we go. So now we have to decide. Uh, we're taking 12. We have 14. That's fine. We can we can go without the Wrath and the card draw. I'm not going to bust a bottle just for that. Okay. So this enables this. Bang. It doesn't matter what we choose here. <clears throat> All right. Cool. So we did not pass under the threshold. Hey, look at that. We get to start the boss fight with a couple extra energy. Not bad. Not bad. <clears throat> and we did upgrade the cut through fate we just picked up. Another cut through fate is perfectly fine. Um, <clears throat> empty fist. No. No. I don't think so. I don't think so. Alright, heal up. Hey, that takes us to full. Who could ask for more? Alrighty, let's see if our commitment to the thin deck works out. Very pleased to see the mental fortress up front. That's probably going to be handy. Uh, we will cut through fate. Um, if we discard lesson learned, which we don't need to end on, so we're going to treat that like a dead card, this fight. Uh, if we do cast it, it exhausts, so it's not the end of the world. Let's discard that. So we draw this now, so we have Bowling Bash on the following turn. That seems good. It shows off the power of Cut Through Fate. We now have four energy, four things to cast. We're not in a stance, so this is fine. We'll do this as setup. And then we'll meditate. We'll get the Simmering Fury and Cut Through Fate back. We're actually gonna we're in calm now because of the meditate, so we're gonna get extra energy along with the extra cards, and hopefully this turn specifically shows off why the simmering fury was the right choice at that event. So we're in wrath. We have extra energy. This is already activated because the meditate deck is working very well. So there we go. And now we're gonna say duplication potion. This is what we've been saving it for. There's 180 damage. <laughs> <laughs> so we just have lethal this turn, I think. Uh, everything's triple, so, yep. There's that. And there's that. And there's... Oh, he's just dead. Wow. Turn two kill. Thank you, Duplication Potion. Thank you, Bowling Bash. And I think the way that Meditate and Simmering Fury play together makes it clear that that was the right choice at that event. So that was a very satisfying fight. <laughs> Lesson learned number two. Uh, no thanks. In fact, at this point, it might be worth pulling it out at a shop. It has served its purpose. 
Wish is interesting. Um, from what I've gathered from the community of the higher ups, if you will, that card is best used for gold acquisition early on. Right now, what I find interesting about it is the scaling opportunity, right? Like, that's the one thing we're missing out on. With the um, Mental Fortress, we do have some scaling of block, and probably reliably so with all these cut-through fates being able to fi uh, find us exactly what we need when we need it. So having the uh, upgraded to four strength at the start of a boss fight seems like a good idea. Would we have time to set it up? I don't know. Uh, we're going to enter the boss fight with six energy, but that doesn't mean Wish is going to be in our opening hand. And of course, every time we try to fish for it, it costs us energy, so there's that. Uh, we do have these, so... Uh, because we have these, I'm willing to give it a shot. I don't... I think we're kind of past the point of needing to keep the deck thin just because of the cut-through fates. It's not proper card draw, but it does give us reach into the deck, which is almost as good. So we will have to try to remember that at least one of these needs to be kept for the boss fight, so that Wish is a one-cost card, basically, if we can't otherwise fit it in. So yeah, I'll go ahead and take the Wish here. There we go. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. Oh man. Um We are already starting to see how much this car deck this class doesn't really need the energy so much. We create our own. And we do have these. So I don't even know how important these are, and quite honestly, right now, being limited to one pull, like, I've come to realize how bad this one is. I know I've picked it a couple times recently, but the ability to pick between different cards, like right now, what I'd like to see more than anything is an inner piece. And what if that's the second or third card? We miss out on it, and that's like the one thing this deck could use. Um, because we didn't get it sooner, we did kind of go heavy into cut through fates, and I think we're doing okay in that regard. Having three in a deck of 20 is quite good, I would say. So, I think we could survive this. And probably this, too. Probably. Probably. I mean, we have a bit of survivability this way. Uh, we cooked the boss there in two turns. That doesn't necessarily mean anything in the future, but... So I think we could handle this. And would we want that over this? Probably. Like, if I knew this would give us an inner calm, maybe. But like I said, with having the three upgraded cut-through fates, I don't even know if, if inner calm is that important anymore. I think the most important thing we could do for the deck is get rid of lesson learned and... Starvation. Starvation would be good. I think Starvation would be good, yeah. Especially if we had 5 energy. That would be the scaling we could use. We kind of have scaling here, but Starvation would be double up on both. No, that's not true. The Dexterity would not help this. Okay. Um, but we still have Vigilance. We still have the Defend Plus. And maybe we pick up one more in Act 3. So we'll have to see how the deck performs. So, yeah, I think this is the play. Let me know what you guys think. That is the end of this act. I hope you're enjoying it. Please let me know your thoughts down below. And stay tuned for Donu and Deca. Take care.